Okay, so today uh, we'll be discussing some of the MCQ questions. So it is expected uh, if your examination is happening online mode, then probably you know uh, your question would be in the form of MCQ only. Uh, so probably in some previous classes we had a discussion about few MCQ question. So let us discuss some of the more MCQ questions actually. So the pattern have we discussed some MCQ question earlier? Yes, sir. Yesterday you discussed. Yeah. Yes, sir. You discussed. Okay. I so mean, your your last your last. Study, sir. Sir, uh, basically those are case studies, so they are uh, some question like MCQ type C. Okay. Okay. Fine. So today the format would be you should be having a pen and paper with you. So I'll be telling you the question number. Okay. So you will be writing the question number. Say for example, I'm telling question number 40. So you'll be writing question number 40. Then I'll be telling you the question and the options. And then you will be, uh, you know, try to, we'll be having a discussion on that. So what you have to do, you will be writing question number 40. Then say, for example, after discussion, we came to an understanding that the uh, option number A is correct. So you will be writing question number 40, option number A, like that. Question number 41, option number B. So you don't have to write the question. You don't have to write the, the answers also. Uh, you have to just write the question number and then the answer number because I will be sharing the you know PDF version of this question answer. So you can so that you can refer to it actually, right? So that uh, I mean the answer correct answer should be with you. So first we'll be starting with uh, question number thirty-two. Okay, question number thirty-two. So it is a personality dimension that describes someone who is responsible dependable persistent and organized it is a personality dimension that describes someone who is responsible dependable persistent and organized options are extrovert intro uh, option um, options are option number a extrovert option number b introvert option number c agreeable option number d consentiousness So if you want, we can repeat the question once more. It is a personality dimension that describes someone who is responsible, dependable, persistent, and organized. C is agreeableness. Sir, option D, contentiousness. Yes, actually, option D, consentiousness, is the correct answer. Okay, just give me one minute.
okay yes right so option number d is the correct answer because consentiousness characteristics are responsible dependable persistent and organized so that is the reason uh, this is option number d is the correct answer that is consentiousness so question number 32 option number d is the correct answer right next one it is the degree to which people believe they are master of their own fate it is the degree to which people believe they are the master of their own fate number one option number one locus of control number two emotional stability number three emotional intelligence and number four none of this so what is the question number the option sir? Is... Oh, sorry question number is 33 so locus of control right very good locus of control uh, because through which we can understand whether we are controlling ourselves or we are being controlled by others if you are controlling ourselves ourselves then what is this, that called i mean what kind of locus of control can be of two type so if we think we are controlling ourselves what is that huh? internal internal right internal, internal locus of control right very good and if uh, we are if we think that we are being controlled by others then it is called external locus of control good external locus of control right next one is question so question number 33 option number a is correct answer okay next question number 34 it is the degree to which individual is pragmatic uh, maintain emotional distance and believe that end can justify the means it is the degree to which an individual is pragmatic maintain emotional distance and believe that end can justify the means options are locus of control, Machiavellianism, emotional stability, emotional intelligence. Uh, Mac? Uh, yes, it is Machiavellianism because Machiavellianism means uh, that is capability to manipulate others and uh, maintaining emotional distance. And another characteristic is end can justify the means. So that is the reason Machiavellianism is the correct answer. So question number 34, option number B is the correct answer. That is Machiavellianism. Okay. So if anybody not able to understand the logic, please ask. Because if you don't understand the logic, then you will not be able to remember, right? It is not possible to remember all the answer of all the MCQ. So if you understand the logic, then you will be able to answer. Because the, uh, I mean, options may differ. Question uh, type may differ. I mean, the articulation of the question may differ. But the meaning of the question would remain the same, right? So if you understand the logic, then you will definitely able to answer the question. Okay. Uh, next is question number 35. Uh, so the question number 34, option number B is the correct answer. Okay, Machiavellianism. Next question number 35. Uh, it is individual's degree of liking or disliking themselves. It is individual's degree of liking or disliking themselves. Option number one, self-worth. Option number two, self-esteem. Option number three, self-perception. Option number D, self-efficacy. So self-esteem. Right, very good. Self-esteem. It is the individual's degree of liking or disliking themselves. So self-esteem. So question number 35, option number B is the correct answer. Question number 35, option number B is the correct answer. Good. Next one, question number 36. Question number 36. So it is the individual's ability to adjust his behavior to external situational factor. External situational factor. So it is individual's ability to adjust his behavior to external situational factor. Option number one, self-monitoring. Option number two, self-esteem. Option number three, self-efficacy. And option number D, self-worth. Self Sir, one, self-worth. Sir, A. Sir, one, self-monitoring. Right, very good. Self-monitoring. Self-monitoring. Self -monitoring. Because you are monitoring your behavior as per the situation, and adjusting your behavior as per the situational requirement, right? Situational requirement. Maybe you are feeling like 
to be happy in some situation. But however, you are understanding the surrounding that if you are expressing your happiness because it may not be liked by the others because of the present situation. So you are controlling yourself. So that's the idea. So if you are having that capability, capability to adjust your behavior as per the situational factor, that means you are having high self-monitoring. The people who cannot adjust themselves, actually they are having low self-monitoring. So they used to behave, you know, they, you know, if you are asking them why you are behaving like this, you are not expected, they will be telling it is, it is, it is like me and you know, this is how I am. You know, it is not that, it is the problem of that they are having very low self-monitoring so that they can, cannot adjust themselves with the situational factor. So they cannot adjust their behavior according. Okay, so question number 36, option number A, self-monitoring is the right answer. Okay, good. Next one. Which of the following is not a characteristics of type A personality? Number one, cannot cope with leisure time. Number two, can relax without guilt. Number three, always moving and walking rapidly. Number four, obsessed with numbers. Sir, B, sir. Uh, so what is the question number, sir? Question number is 37. Question number is 37. Uh, option is, I think, B. B. Okay. Anyone else having any other answer? Which one is not a characteristics of type A? Options. Number one, cannot cope up with leisure time. Number two, can relax without guilt. Number three, always moving and walking rapidly. Number four, obsessed with numbers. So the option B. Sir, option B. Right. Option B is the correct answer because uh, actually they cannot relax without guilt. But here the option is can relax without guilt. So actually they cannot relax without guilt. So that is the reason. Option number B is the correct answer. That is question number 37. Option number B is the correct answer. Okay. Now question number 39. Okay. Question number 39. Uh, it is a process by which individual organizes and interpret their sensory impression in order to give meaning to their environment. I'm just repeating once more. It is a process by which individuals organize and interpret their sensory impression in order to giving, give a meaning to their environment. Options are reaction, action, projection, perception. Is the process by which individual B. So perfect, perception. perception. So option D, perception. Right, very good. Perception. It is perception. Right. Question number 39, option number D, that is perception. Very good. Okay. Now, uh, so question number 39, option number D is the correct answer. Uh, perception. So question number 40. It is attributing one's own characteristics to other people. It is attributing one's own characteristics to the other people. Options are projection, halo effect, contrast effect, stereotyping. Projection. Sir, a projection. Right. Very good. Projection. When? We are trying to project ourselves in others. That means attributing one's own characteristics to other people. So that is called projection error. So here, question number 40, option number A is the correct answer. Okay, good. Question number 41. It is judging someone on the basis of one's perception of the group to which that person belongs. It is judging someone on the basis of one's perception of the group to which that person belongs. Number one, halo effect. Number two, stereotyping. Number three, projection. Number four, contrast effect. So stereotyping. stereotyping. So this stereotyping. Right, very good. Stereotyping. When we are trying to evaluate a person based on the group that person belongs to, right? So that is the reason that is called the stereotyping. So question number 41, option number B is the correct answer. Next question number 42.
these are the individuals who report unethical practices by their employer to the outsider these are the individuals who report it are probably you have studied these things in uh, values and ethics class probably not in ov class i don't know whether i have discussed this so these are the individuals who report unethical practices by their employer to the outsider options are options are non trustworthy number 2 whistle blower number 3 dishonest number 4 irresponsible so whistle blower so so whistle blower option right. b whistle blower so any idea what do you mean by whistle blower actually what is whistle blowing speaking I mean, ill behind the back uh huh sir when i guess an individual report something wrong in an organization okay so disclosing uh, confidential uh, information sir, like it, some of this. Mm -hmm. sir it is an insider or an employee who reports something which is uh, something which is going happening wrong in the company to not, to to the outside world right right very good actually whenever seeing any any kind of unethical practices if you are informing to the appropriate authority it is not always outsider because the whistle blowing can be of two type internal whistle blowing external whistle blowing if you see something unethical and if you are informing the same thing internally to the appropriate authority who can take some action so that is called internal whistle blowing now if you don't believe or if you don't trust the internal people then you are informing the same thing to the outsider like say for example media police or anyone administration about it so then it is called the external uh, whistle blowing now the whistle blowing actually uh, from i mean how you are blowing the whistle based on that whistle blowing can be of three type number one is uh, open whistle blowing number two is anonymous whistle blowing and number three is partly anonymous whistle blowing now what is open whistle blowing open whistle blowing means you are disclosing your identity to the public and telling that yes my name is this i am working in this organization in this position and uh, you are disclosing your face also and you are telling uh, that uh, this is what is happening inside the organization please look into it you are disclosing your own identity number 2 is you know anonymous that means you are making a phone call from the public telephone booth you are not using your mobile phone also and you are informing to the appropriate authority maybe the police or the media that uh, you know this is a, i don't want to disclose my identity but this is what is happening please go and check so this is called anonymous whistle blowing where you don't want to disclose your identity and number 3 is partly anonymous partly anonymous means you are disclosing your identity to the media right probably you have seen in some of the uh, you know television news channels sometimes the uh, the speaker's face is being blurred or they are not facing the camera but talking so here actually they are not uh, disclosing their identity but uh, disclosing something which is unethical or something like that so that is the concept of the partly anonymous whistle blowing right so uh, i mean whistle blowers are you know a lot of time they are being victimized okay so that is the reason you have to be very much careful you know whistle blowing definitely is one of the ethical practices you should be doing for the overall development of the country or the company or the society but however you need to first safeguard yourself as well because the first whistle blower in india was a you know uh, i just forget the name of his that person he is uh, actually the iit i am graduate joined indian oil and found some unethical practices and immediately informed to the appropriate authority within the organization resulted resulted into he got murdered within 7 days okay so there are a lot of examples are there because you never know how many people are involved into it the perfect example you can see probably in the movie called rustam i don't know how many of you have watched the movie called rustam of akshay kumar uh, so in that particular movie it has been shown that uh, he was supposed to purchase an aircraft carrier from uh, US, uk i guess i mean one of the private organizations but uh, it, it was uh, per, uh, as far as the looks is concerned it was perfect but when akshay kumar was checking the quality he was he has found that it is of very poor quality i mean it is ultimately is not going to add value to the indian army or the navy uh, so uh, he don't wanted to purchase so then the author i mean that particular organization offered him a bribe 
of something probably 10 lakhs. Uh, so again, he tried to inform the same thing to the appropriate authority within that department. So if you can remember the scene actually, so in that particular scene that has been told, I mean the secretary, I mean the defense minister secretary was telling uh, that, okay, so they have offered you only 10 lakhs. So I will ask, ask them to offer you 20 lakhs. Please put the signature. So you never know who is involved. So that is so internal whistleblowing did not work. So, right. So that's the fundamental concept of this thing. So whistleblowing definitely, uh, the, I mean, the, this is one of the tool. I mean, the people should be uh, uh, should be coming uh, uh, up and talk about this. But however, first thing you need to safeguard yourself, right? So there is uh, there uh, another person who was, uh, you know, there that that came to television also. I mean, the, the, I mean, that person gave an interview in the television. So he actually, he worked in a government department. Uh, so I'm not taking the name of the department actually. Uh, so he got transferred probably 12 times in three years period. It is because of the fact that uh, uh, these things, I mean, because of the nature of the whistleblowing, he, whenever he see uh, some kind of unethical practices, he used to inform the appropriate authority to media and all. So that's why he keep on, uh, I mean, got transferred. And the, at the end, uh, uh, in I mean, after 12 transfer, her daughter got got murdered, but it has been shown as a suicide kind of thing. So anyway, I mean, uh, that's the thing. So these are the challenges of whistleblowing. So definitely, theoretically and definitely, uh, logically, ethically, it is important. We have to do it. But however, the, you need to safeguard yourself as well first. So that's the thing. So an another example, it was a example. Uh, one person, he is IPS, IS officer, actually. Um, I mean, find out some of the pilferages and some of the unethical practices that is going on uh, in the uh, in a particular department of a road construction. Actually, say so for example, the road is being constructed for um, you know 10 kilometer, but the, it was being built for 100 kilometer, like that. I mean, falsely claiming the bill. So he has identified and he has informed uh, to the appropriate department and requested them, please don't disclose my identity because then I'll be in problem. But I am informing you this is happening. But the, unfortunately, from that particular department itself. On the very next day in the newspaper, a, I mean, front page news came out that we have found one of the best honest officer uh, in the country who have identified this the pilferage or these things happening. Uh, so, uh, so these things, I mean, his name, his picture, everything was displayed. Result, within three days, he got murdered, actually, right? So that's the problem. I mean, uh, so we, we need to be careful because you need to protect yourself, you need to protect your family first. So that is important. But nowadays there are bills are coming, probably Whistleblower Protection Act. But of course there are rules, but you know, with the rules and regulations also, uh, there are mishaps that happen. So that's the reason we have to be careful. So anyway, so that is the fundamental concept of the uh, whistleblower. Okay, next one, question. So question number 42, option number B, that is whistleblower is the correct answer. Next question number 43. Okay, question number 43. So question number 43 uh, question is, it is, uh, it is a designated work group defined by the organization structure. Is, it is a designated work group defined by the organization structure. Options are formal group, informal group, friendship group, interest group. Formal group. It's a formal group. Right, formal group, because it is defined by the organizational structure. So formal group, so question number 43, option number A is the correct answer. Good. Next one, it is a stage in group development characterized by intra-group conflict. It is a stage of group development characterized by intra-group conflict. Option R, uh, A, norming stage, B, performing stage, C, forming stage, D, storming stage. So D storming stage. Right, D storming stage because in this particular uh, stage, the team members or the group members are having conflict within uh, with each other actually. So that is why this is called storming stage. So question number 44, option number D, that is the storming stage is the correct answer. Good. Next one, it is a stage in the group development characterized by close relationship and cohesiveness close relationship and cohesiveness. Number one, forming. Number two, performing. Number three, norming. Number four, storming. Forming. Uh, norming. Uh, yes, norming. It, actually norming. 
uh, norming because in the forming stage, uh, this is the first time you are meeting. So that's why there is no chances of uh, this cohesiveness. You know, nobody knows each other. So that is called the forming stage. But however, norming stage means all the people are following the rules and regulations uh, of that uh, group. And that's why the bonding and the cohesiveness increases. So that is the reason question number 45, option number C, that is the norming stage is the correct answer. Okay, next one, question number 46. A set of expected behavior pattern attributed to someone occupying in a given position in a social unit is known as what? It is a set of expected behavior pattern attributed to someone occupying in a given position in a social unit is known as number one roles, number two norms, number three status, number four none of this. So option a role, roles. Right, very good, roles. That means uh, like say for example, right now I'm playing the role of a teacher, you are playing the role of a student. So that is the thing. So a set of expected behavior pattern attributed to someone occupying a given position in a social unit is known as roles. That means this is expected. Uh, I mean, this is, this is a police person. And so he is expected to behave like this. He is a teacher. He is expected to behave like this. He is a student. He, he expected to, he or she expected to behave like this. So that is the fundamental concept. So that is why question number 46 Option number, okay, uh, the op op option number, uh, these things, I mean, uh, a. a is the correct answer. So option rules, a. so question number 46, option number A, that is rule, right, very good. Next question number 47, it is an individual's view how he or she is supposed to act in a given situation. It is an individual's view of how he or she is supposed to act in a given situation. Options. A, role conflict. B, role identity. C, role perception. D, role expectation. Option C, role perception. Role perception. Right, very good. Role perception. That means it is individually what we think about our role. What is your idea about my role? I mean, you are a student, you are having an idea that this is the things you should do, this is the things you should not do. Right? It is your perception. So similarly, uh, being a teacher, I am also having an idea that is perception about my role. So that is the fundamental concept of role perception. So question number 47 Option number C, role perception is the correct answer, okay? Next is question number 48. Um, it is how others believe a person should act in a given situation. It is how others believe a person should act in a given situation. Number one, role identity. Number two, role expectation. Number three, role perception. Number four, role conflict. So, role role expectation. expectation. Right, role expectation. expectation. Role expectation. What others uh, believe that yes, he is a teacher, he should behave like this. That is the idea. That is the other's expectation about it. He is a student, he should behave like this. So that is called the other's expectation. So that is called the role expectations actually. What others believe. So question number 48, option number B, that is role expectation is the correct answer. Okay, next one, question number 49. A situation in which an individual is confronted by a divergent role expectation is known as what? A situation in which an individual is confronted by divergent role expectation is known as what? Number one, role conflict. Number two, role identity. Number three, role expectation. Number four, role perception. So role, role conflict. conflict. Role conflict. Right, role conflict. 
that means a situation in which an individual is confronted by divergent role expectation is known as role conflict that is question number 49 option number a is the right answer probably on your last class probably i was having a uh, class with you on wednesday but i could not take it it is because of the reason of role conflict why because some another class in some other department in hospital management department one class was scheduled on that particular time period okay now uh, because it was scheduled earlier also but somehow probably you know that one of your class schedule is little bit changed like instead of 2 to 3 that class is from 2 30 to 3 30 so that's why the time slots got disturbed actually so usually i, I used to have this conflict every week so i used to balance between the both class so last class what happened that those particular uh, mha department hospital administration department uh, students was having examination um, i mean uh, internal examination so that's why i need to you know complete a particular topic 